If you really want to get the bums out of Washington, abolish their perks. What's the best way to get these uh, career politicians out of Washington, D.C., the people who are making laws for us? Actually, they're not the ones making laws for us. Uh, we have a 2,600-page health care bill, and my guess is not a single congressman or senator had anything to do with writing that bill. It's the people they hire, it's the committees that, that they hire, and the experts that they bring in that end up writing these bills. And then this doesn't count all the, uh, the federal register uh, uh, pages that come out every single day. It used to be that there was 60,000 pages a day, one regulation after another. And so we, we have these, these politicians up in Washington, D.C., and they have perks beyond belief. Uh, I'll give you a good example of this. When Social Security was instituted, and not everyone was brought under Social Security, but Congress made it very, very clear that they had exempted themselves from Social Security. Uh, and uh, when 1983 came along and, and finally uh, they, they revamped, the, revamped the system, you began to see that uh, Congress had these perks all along. They had their own private insurance uh, program independent of Social Security. They had exempted, exempted them themselves. They had exempted other federal employees. And in fact, uh, teachers could exempt them, be exempt from Social Security as well. So a lot of the regulations that, that come down to us that we have to abide by, say, OSHA regulations, Congress has exempted itself. Uh, even on hiring uh, policies, Congress has exempted itself. And it has done so in, in the name of the separation of power. So you can't have uh, one branch of government, say the judiciary, coming in and telling Congress what to do on, on points of legislation because Congress has exempted itself. The, and so these, uh, because Congress could then go along to the courts and say to the courts, well, now you have, to, you have to function this particular way. And so Congress has been involved in the perk business for quite some time. And again, Social Security is a very good uh, example of that. Well, there was an article in a Canadian newspaper written by A.J. J. Cameron, and uh, the name of his article is Punt Term Limits Eliminate the Perks. He says, what we've done over the years, we've tried to get rid of uh, congressmen uh, be based upon term limits. Uh, he, he, he starts off with this, this headline. He says, heard recently on a morning talk show uh, in Kansas City, I've only been in office 14 years. Isn't that the crux of our challenges with a non-responsive, non-representative, and irresponsible federal government? Uh, you know, the idea of someone in power for 16 years really ought to strike a nerve with us. Uh, uh, Patty Murray, I believe, up in Washington State. Uh, this is going to be her fourth six-year term, so uh, she has been in, in office uh, nearly eight, 18 years, and the amount of damage that she's done in 18 years is considerable. But one way to get rid of, of the, the, uh, these, these congressmen is to make it difficult for them to stay in office. Um, one of the first things I would propose is, is to turn off all the air conditioning in Washington and all the government buildings in Washington, D.C. You say, well, what would that do? Well, they wouldn't be there that long. And, uh, and we, we could use the argument about global warming and, and the, the, use, the wise use of Earth's resources and really force them to live consistently with this concept of uh, cap and trade. So we were saying, look, we want you to live, we want to reduce your carbon footprint. And one way we can do that is to eliminate uh, air conditioning. And by eliminating air conditioning, the Congress wouldn't be up there many years. And we have to remember that, that uh, Congress was a part-time job some time ago. So this would keep, the, keep anybody from wanting to be a career politician. One month in the summer, in the heat of the summer of Washington, D.C., would certainly send these guys back home. Almost nobody would want to work in Washington, D.C. Uh, but here are some of the perks uh, that they have. They have access to health insurance from over 300 private companies that is not single payer, centralized or government run health care and exempting themselves from the regime's stealth care legislation being forced upon the citizens of the United States of America. You see, one of the things that was proposed is that Congress would come under the same health care legislation that the rest of us did. They would not vote for that. But we could, we could say, look, 
for, for Congress is to start pushing Congress to live with the same laws that they impose upon us. They have the ability to vote their own pay raises while having the ability to limit uh, the cost of living um, increases for entitlement programs and military personnel. That is, they set their own pay scale, uh, yet because of the types of legislation that they pass, they can determine who else can get a raise. Uh, franking privileges. Franking privileges are essentially free postage. And so if you or I wanted to run against one of these congressmen, uh, we would have to, of course, pay a great deal of money in, in postage. Well, they wouldn't have to do that. They can mail to their constituents on a regular basis for free. And they can use that privilege, of course, to tell all these people of all the great things that they've done for them over the years. They have the ability to retain political contributions beyond one election, uh, allowing these lifetime political uh, barracudas to amass a war chest for future candidacies for political office or for personal use once they finally decide to resign from office, further separating them from the masses. So they build up this great political war chest and they can continue it from one election to another and when they finally resign, they can take it with them. And this is another perk that we ought to eliminate. Uh, for them. Uh, they hold special investigative panels that attempt to hold corporate leaders to levels of citizenship, ethics, and legality uh, for which many in elective office fail to live up to. And so they set standards for others and they'll set hearings and panels and so forth and then they themselves uh, uh, won't abide by these, ethic, uh, by these ethical rules. We're seeing this uh, with Charlie Rangel. I mean, he has been violating ethical issues for many, many years, Maxine Waters as well, uh, Barney Frank and so forth, uh, but Congress is not as hard on their own members as they are on the rest of us. They double dip of, on retirement programs while in office. Uh, and so they may have worked for the government in this one area and they go and work for the government in another area, and so they get a pension from both of these issues because we should eliminate that as well. Uh, they exempt themselves from much of the legislation forced upon the rest of the citizens of the United States. And so they pass all of these laws. I had mentioned OSHA uh, and Social Security, although I believe Congress, at least new congressmen, are in the Social Security system. We should eliminate any, every law that they pass, they have to live by themselves. Uh, then, the, 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 probably the, the biggest one is, is they become lobbyists uh, after they, they, get, they run for political office. And I would say that anybody running for political office cannot be a lobbyist. Uh, so these, these, these government employees end up going to Washington, D.C. Uh, they take advantage of the power. They, it is a power trip that they are on. They have all of these perks. They have all these people working for them. They have a huge budget. Uh, they get all the privileges and, and, and perks of the office. Uh, they, with this power trip, they, they put this legislation upon us, they propose these things on us, they make us live by them, and then they exempt themselves from all of these things. If private business operated the way our federal government did on terms of uh, debt, uh, uh, unfunded mandates and so forth, these people would be in jail. If insurance companies uh, ran their business like our government runs Social Security, they would be in jail. And so one of the ways to empty the halls of the career politicians is to eliminate all of the perks that they have. Uh, they, want, they, want to work, uh, they want to work in Washington, D.C. Uh, they can do so, but uh, they're going to have to do it on our terms and not their own terms. And we would not be a viol there wouldn't be any violation of anything regarding the Constitution because the perks that they have handed out to themselves are not constitutional perks. These are things that they have given to themselves. And of course, one of the biggest things that they do, one of the biggest perks that they have, is they have the ability to pass legislation to continue them in office uh, by saying to this group, I'm going to take care of you here, I'm going to take care of you here, I'm going to give you money here, I'm going to give you money there. Uh, and so one of the other things, I think the final thing we ought to do in order to keep uh, these guys out of Congress is that uh, they have to abide by the Constitution. Uh, they have to get back to the general welfare clause, not the particular welfare. That is, any legislation they pass has to, has to affect the country generally, not particularly. And that means you cannot pass legislation that transfers money from one group to another group so that you can get that vote. So if you want to get rid of the politicians in Washington, make it hard for them to stay in Washington, D.C. Let's pull the plug on the air conditioning and also pull the plug on all of their perks.
For more related to this topic, check out God vs. Socialism, a biblical critique of the new social gospel. You will find it at AmericanVision.com.